All right, could you still hear me, man? Okay, there we go. Audio is finally uh, working. Okay, so this video is about the misconceptions about the Book of the Dead. Um, would you like to start it off? <clears throat> uh, yeah, when you look at the Book of Dead, uh, I hear a lot of people say that once you uh, meet that, uh, once you once you get judged in the afterlife. That you get more than one chance. That even if you mess up, you get put back on Earth, and you live it up. You keep doing it over and over again until you get it right. And almost as if it's almost as if they're trying to relate it to uh, reincarnation. Yeah. So they so they think that if you make a mistake, you get to be reincarnated. So let's take a look at the image here so so here's Hunifer taken by Anubis getting weighed then she goes then, then go on the Thoth over here then the person goes to Horus in which he takes the person the rest of the way to Osiris for the final part of the judgment now, if you can't if you can't get past this point over here, then uh, and you and that means that pretty much means you failed in life, then you're gonna get eaten by this crocodile, uh, this this dog that has a crocodile head. Um, so your soul gets eaten by that by the Amit. That's the name A M M I T. And that's pretty much it. It's done. There is no second chances or reincarnation, as some people like to believe. Okay, so um, what else? Yeah, what what do you what, what do you think about this? Uh, people wanting to think that this is a reincarnating cycle because this seems more like the. <coughs> This seems more like the Christian judgment situation, where you get only you, get only, you only get one shot to get right with God, or you're going to go to hell, or you're going to just stay dead, like your witnesses believe. I think people they don't really do a good job of like going to good credible sources, because a lot of videos that I see, when I see people explain the Book of Dead, they don't really go into detail on what happens if you don't. If you don't line up to the laws of of Mahat, or if your heart is heavier than the feather weighing on the scale, or they don't even speak on the, Egypt, the, the Egyptian god as Emmet, who's responsible. <clears throat> if you don't like follow the guidelines of, of what you're supposed to follow, like the laws and principles that the Egyptians believed in, and that if you come up on a negative side or come up short, then the Egyptian God of Emmet will eventually just like devour your heart because that's what's that's just being weighed on the scale of your heart. So if it's like lower than the feather, I mean, no, if it's heavier than the feather, then it will get beaten by the Egyptian God. That's the whole that's the reason why the Egyptian God of Emmet is there. Yeah. So, um, what else do you have to say about this? Like, would you say this is similar to the Christian idea of the judgment? Yeah, it seems similar. And then another point I want to bring up is that I noticed that when you look up, when you uh, look up um, Emmett on Google, you're going to see some sources saying that it's referenced as the as, um, like a fire, and I find it to be kind of strange because the like a fire is also mentioned in the Book of Revelation. So I see a lot of similarities between the two. 
Like, yes. Um, and the other thing is, in no way am I saying that the Christian um, myth about the judgment came from this particular Um, it did not come from the book, book of the dead. I'm not saying that it did or didn't, but um, if you look in the if you look in the New Testament, it'll often call uh, hell Hades. Now, I know there's some people that think that oh, it came from Egypt, the whole thing came from Egypt, but um. But if you look at the the fact that the New Testament was written in Greek, then would you agree with me that the people that wrote the New Testament in Greek would be f more familiar with the Greek myths than they are with the yeah. Egyptian? Yeah, because they would be influenced by what the Greeks taught and what they believed in. Right. <clears throat> Now, like I brought up Hades earlier, all you have to do is, like, you could just type. Um, Hades Bible verse, and we'll just go to this pretty obvious Christian website here, and you read, um... Acts chapter 2, 20, verse 27, because you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor allow your Holy One to undergo decay. And also Revelation chapter 20, verse 13 to 14, uh, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every one of them according to their deeds, but death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. So, if I were to think about, like, if I were to conclude where the story, where this judgment story really came from, then I would think that it came from the story, uh, from the Greco-Roman understanding of Hades or Pluto, um, because, well. They had a similar judgment scene down there as well. You know, souls burning in hell, just like what happened in the New Testament. Not necessarily the Egyptians. And even if the Egyptians did have the exact same system, well, the New Testament's mentioning Hades instead of the Amet or any of the Egyptian deities for that matter. So would you agree with me if I were to say it's kind of like in its in its own way it's admitting it borrowed the story from Hades? You talking about the judgment scene? Yeah, the the, the story of Hades in, in the New Testament was borrowed from the Greco-Roman story of Hades. Yeah, according to the Greek mythology, yes. Okay, so now so since we agree on that. Is there anything more that you'd like to say on the matter? <clears throat> well, speaking of the Egyptian goddess Amet, she was also feared by the Egyptians. A lot of Egyptians, like upon and after that, they, were, they feared this goddess goddess. They feared her because they know that if their heart was not aligned with the principles of art, then they would their heart would get devoured. Um, they would get um, they would cease to exist, and they would not be allowed to continue their voyage with Osiris in the next ascension. Right, because Osiris was known as the judge of the underworld. So if you didn't make it past the uh, this this scene, then you would not be able to like ascend with Osiris. Right. Okay, I think that 
pretty much covers it, wouldn't you say? Yeah. So it's important that um, people do their do their research. Be careful which websites you go to. This um, I would especially not listen to um, anything um, else of what that person may be thinking. Because if you if they tell you Horus, December twenty fifth nonsense. Because Egyptians never said Horus was born and rose again for the dead on December twenty fifth, or was born on December twenty fifth. Um, nothing about twelve apostles, twelve disciples of Horus. I meant to say. Um, and his mother Isis was not a virgin; she had sex with Osiris, and Horus was born out of that. Okay, so he's not not born of a virgin. So the same scenario with the Book of the Dead. Anyone tries to tell you the Book of the Dead that has a reincarnating story in there, about uh, the reincarnating judgment, it doesn't. It's uh, one shot, one chance. You fail, you get eaten, that's it. By the Goss Amit, by the way. A-M-M-I-T. Look it up. Okay. I'm, that's pretty much it.